Stat Sheet Stuffers Basically, players who can do it all, they can fill the stat sheet with numbers across the board. Points, rebounds, assists, steals and blocks, everything. These guys are phenomenal choices for the Fantasy League. If anyone here likes to play fantasy basketball, you know how valuable these guys are. Also, in this video, I won't go too far back in history, cause in the 50s and 60s, they weren't recording steals or blocks, so I don't think it's fair to include players from that era. And the pace of the game was ridiculous, so the numbers were inflated. Sorry Oscar, sorry Wilt. I know I'm gonna be missing some players, but I'm putting 18 on my list, which is already a lot. You can let me know at the end which other players deserve to be on here. Without further ado, here are the 18 greatest stat sheet stuffers in NBA history. Also, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe. Apparently, over 60% of my viewers aren't. But hey, if you like the content, drop a sub or a like, and thank you so much for the support. Number 18, Draymond Green. When it comes to all-around stats, Green is the perfect modern example. Now, of course his scoring isn't that high, and he could do better in that department, but he literally does a bit of everything, even things that don't show up on the stat sheet. He had multiple seasons of averaging at least 7 rebounds and 7 assists. In the 2016-17 season, he also led the league in steals per game, and recorded 1.4 blocks to go along with it, joining a small select group of players in NBA history to do so. Number 17, Ben Simmons. There's been very few taller point guards to grace the basketball floor, and actually succeed in doing so. Simmons is one of them. While he runs the offense, his skill set is so diverse, he could post up and compete for rebounds against the opposing centers. He even led the league in steals in 2020 while continuing to put up 16, 8, and 8, his career numbers. We've gotten accustomed to him putting up this kind of stat line, but it's always impressive. He consistently stuffs the stat sheet on a daily basis. Number 16, Fat Lever. Who is he? He's one of the only triple-double machines in NBA history that never gets talked about. Fat Lever in his prime was putting up nearly 20 points, 9 rebounds, 9 assists, and almost 3 steals per game. Those are insane numbers, recorded by a guy who gets little recognition. Not only that, but he was a point guard. And I'm not talking about a Magic Johnson-sized point guard either. He was a slender point guard, 6'3", 170 pounds, who could do it all. NBA historians refer to him as the Jason Kidd of the 1980s. Number 15, The Matrix, Sean Marion. A guy who didn't get his due. On the Phoenix Suns, he was always overshadowed by Nash and Amari. But Marion was legitimately the best third option they could have hoped for. His versatility on both ends, especially defensively, the team always relied on him to guard the opposing team's best wing players or perimeter threats. Back in the mid-2000s, I still remember people picking him in fantasy over guys like Kobe or T-Mac, because he hits so many categories across the board. Even three-point shooting too, he was surprisingly decent with his ridiculous T-Rex form. The 06 campaign was probably his most impactful year, with Amari sitting out due to injury, Marion made up for his absence. He put up a crazy stat line, that included 2 steals and 1.7 blocks per game. He actually put up similar numbers in many seasons, displaying his all-around incredible play on a team that desperately needed him. Number 14, Andre Kirilenko. He's got the greatest nickname of all time, and it works well with his game too. Like how AK-47s are so versatile, so was he. Kirilenko played in an era where players like him were not appreciated enough. Nowadays, everyone appreciates a do-it-all wing player. Guys like Draymond Green were praised all the time during the Warriors championship run. But for Kirilenko, he was ahead of his time. The man had seasons where he put up over 1.5 steals and around 3 blocks per game while being capable of defending every single position. Kirilenko was laterally quick to keep up with guards, and his arms were so long he could defend centers in a pinch. On top of being a phenomenal passer and great rebounder, there were no weaknesses in his game. Number 13, Luka Doncic. Luka's the youngest guy on this list, but there's no question he's had a legendary start to his NBA career. 
Maybe the steals and blocks are lacking a bit, but he puts up so many raw stats in every other category, it's crazy. He's the only player since LeBron James to put up these kind of numbers so early into their careers. Number 12, Giannis. He's just insane, especially his 2019-20 campaign. In other years, especially when he was younger, he'd consistently be near the top in steals and blocks too. But it's the passing that stands out for me. That's something that he had to develop over time, and now, he's one of the best passing big men in the league too. A complete player. Number 11, Jason Kidd. You can't have a stat-stuffing video without mentioning Jason Kidd. Back in the 2000s, he was THE triple-double machine. He had the most triple-doubles of the 2000s decade. At that time, the only point guard who could do it all. He had some other great point guards who were lacking in one particular area or another, like Steve Nash when it came to defense, or others who weren't as good of a rebounder. Kidd's shooting was a slight weakness, but he improved over time. However, if you're looking for a solid 16 or 17 points, 7 rebounds, while also leading the league in assists for 5 different seasons, plus you add 2 steals on top, Kidd is your guy. Number 10, Larry Bird. You might be asking, really? Why is Larry ranked at number 10? Shouldn't he be much higher on this list? Well, this isn't a list about the greatest players of all time. It's about the best stat sheet stuffers. While Larry does stuff the stat sheet, he's always kinda lacked in the steals and blocks department. Especially compared to the players coming up in this list. In this video, I'm giving more credit to players who excelled in those categories. Larry still stuffs the stat sheet though. He had multiple seasons averaging close to 30 points a game with 9 or 10 rebounds and 6 or 7 assists. A crazy amount of stats during an era where it was kinda rare to see. Number 9, LeBron James. Statistically, LeBron and Larry were quite similar. Larry had a few more rebounds, while LeBron had a few more assists. He kinda took what Larry did and turned it up another notch. I mean, it's LeBron for crying out loud. 27-7-7 career stats, nothing else needs to be said. Number 8, Kevin Garnett. KG was an absolute monster, and during his days in Minneapolis, his supporting cast was so bad that they had to rely on him to do everything. But he delivered. For four consecutive seasons, he led the league in rebounding. But more impressively, there were times when he was forced to run the offense. And even took turns playing as the point forward, just cause the Wolves had nobody else. That's why he easily put up 5 or 6 assists, and close to 2 steals and 2 blocks in some years too. Prime KG had the complete package. A statistical monster with no weaknesses whatsoever. Number 7 and number 6, James Harden and Russell Westbrook. Can't really have a stat stuffing video without these two. Now, of course there's some stat padding going on, but it's not like they're the only ones who do that. Regardless, both of them have been a walking triple-double for so many years. More so Westbrook than Harden. Russ has had four different seasons of averaging a triple-double, one of which was a 30-point triple-double. To put this into perspective, I saw this stat recently. Russell Westbrook has already broken the Wizards franchise record for most triple doubles by a single player. And yet, he basically just got here. In late March, Westbrook recorded his 16th triple double for the franchise. The previous Wizards record was only 15, set by Daryl Walker. It's crazy, he literally broke the record in his 38th game as a Washington Wizard. And since then, he continued to add on to his record. Harden hasn't been doing too shabby himself. He led the league in scoring for three seasons and in assists for two seasons. Since the 70s, only Harden, Westbrook, and LeBron have led the league in both scoring and assists. Number 5, Magic Johnson. While everyone knows how Magic dominated during his time, he also surprisingly led the league in steals for two separate seasons. One where he averaged 3.4 steals a game. Magic stuffed the stat sheet like crazy. Being a 6'9 point guard was a revolutionary aspect in itself, and he changed the way we viewed the position. Back then, point guards were mostly pigeonholed into a specific role, but Magic could do everything from that position. The thought back then was that bigger point guards would get abused by smaller, quicker ones. 
But Magic, especially in his younger days, he was as fast as a gazelle, could change speeds at will, and on offense, easily saw over the defense due to his height, and could abuse his smaller defenders in the post. He changed the position, and now, there's no stigma behind having a big guy running the offense. Number 4, David Robinson. There's only two players in NBA history who recorded at least four blocks and two steals per game in a season. David Robinson and Hakeem Olajuwon. While Robinson didn't have the same longevity as Hakeem, at his peak, his numbers were just as impressive. One year, he led the league in scoring, averaging close to 30 points a game, and dropping 71 points one time. Another year, he led the league in boards. Another year, he led the league in blocks. In a six-year stretch from 1991 to 1996, he put up these numbers. Yeesh! Number 3, Michael Jordan. Can't really have a list like this without MJ. In his best statistical season, this is what it looked like. Yep, that's 1988. Young MJ was built differently. Prior to his championship days, it was literally just him doing whatever he wanted. When he got slotted in at point guard for a season, he started averaging 8 assists per game. We know about the points, we know about the rebounds and assists, but there were a few years where he averaged about 3 steals and 1.5 blocks per game. In fact, MJ once held the record for most total blocks by a shooting guard, including the regular season and playoffs. It wasn't until decades later when Dwayne Wade broke his record. Number 2, Julius Irving. This might surprise some of you who thought Dr. J was only a scorer, but back in the day, he put up some crazy numbers across the board. The scoring is not a surprise, but did you know he averaged nearly 16 rebounds a game in his rookie season? That's the second highest among all small forwards, only behind Elgin Baylor. But he also had many seasons of averaging over 4 or 5 assists, and also the first player to average more than 2 blocks and 2 steals in the same year. In a four-year stretch from 1973 to 1976, this was his stat line. That's insane. I mean, the scoring is expected, but to average two blocks a game as a small forward is crazy. Among all small forwards, Dr. J is number one in blocks by a massive margin. If you look at career blocks, only one player in the top 50 is not a big man. That's Dr. J, who finished his career with the same number of blocks as Pal Gasol. Granted, some people dismiss these accomplishments, because he played for many years in the ABA. But even after the merger, his numbers were still very impressive. Even by his mid-30s, he was still putting up nearly two steals and two blocks a game. And finally, at number one, Hakeem Olajuwon. 24 points, 14 rebounds, 3 assists, 2 steals, 4.6 blocks. That was Hakeem's stat line in the 1989-90 season. He simultaneously led the league in both rebounds and blocks that year. In the previous season, he averaged nearly 3 steals per game. The numbers he put up were unprecedented. Nobody witnessed a center who could do things he did. With hands and feet as quick as a guard, but strong and sturdy to dominate in the post. Even as his career progressed, it was clear to everyone that it wasn't the athleticism that made Hakeem so good. It was his intelligence. He could predict where his opponents were vulnerable, so he can reach in to strip away the ball. His defensive positioning is arguably the best we've ever seen. That's why he can still contest shots and get blocks even at an older age. When it comes to filling up the stat sheet with raw numbers across the spectrum, nobody did it better than Hakeem. Anyway, finally, that's all folks. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments which other players could be categorized as stat sheet stuffers. What other players would you add to the list? Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.